Uh, good evening. Uh, since this is a historical organization, uh, just one bit of history uh, about myself. I became involved with the Mathis Vinnie Museum in the late 1940s as a teenager excavating at the head of the lagoon with Gail Huntington, who the library is, is named after. So, um, and I've, I've seen all sorts of transformations and, and uh, movement uh, uh, over those many years and coming to fruition was the, the Marine Hospital. So it's, it's pretty exciting. And uh, I hope I'm still around to walk into the front door. <laughs> um, established by the museum in 2009, the Mathis Vineyard Medal was created to recognize the outstanding contributions to island history, historic preservation, the fine and performing arts, literature, community activism, um, education, and the Vineyard way of life by those who exemplify a deep-seated commitment to this special place. Over the past five years, 17 individuals and families have been awarded the Mothers Vineyard Medal, including Ray Ellis, the eminent vineyard uh, painter, um, Della Hardman, uh, art professor, host of the radio show uh, Black Experience, and also in recognition of her vineyard community service. David McCullough, who needs no introduction as the uh, country's uh, uh, preeminent uh, uh, historian. Um, Tobias Vanderhoop, who's the uh, spiritual leader of the Wampanoag uh, and tribe, as well as the chair of the Wampanoag tribe uh, of Gay Head. Um, Geraldine Books, author of Caleb's Crossing, about a vineyard Wampanoag who was the first uh, Native American to graduate from Harvard. Uh, um, Olga Hirschhorn, the renowned supporter of the arts and the originator of the Chicken Alley art sale at the Vineyard Haven Thrift Shop, which benefits the Mothers Vineyard uh, Community Service. Uh, I'm going to be the first in line this time. I always seem to get there late and everything's gone. But, uh, um, uh, and Sheldon Hackney, former president of the University of Pennsylvania, former director of the National Endowment for the Humanities, and past president of, uh, of this museum who launched the museum on its current path to the development of its new campus at the Marine Ho Hospital location, Vineyard Haven. He'll be sadly missed. This evening, we're assembled to honor Dorothy Bangs, Richard Paradise, and Renee uh, Balter for their contributions to Vineyard history, arts, community organizations, and as supporters of the museum. Each of the honorees will be presented uh, their medals by close friends and colleagues Dorothy Banks by Denny Workman, board member, former Tisbury selectman, and co-founder of the Mouthers Vineyard Community uh, Television. And I might also add, uh, uh, he and I were in the same class at Tabor, and I won't tell you what year that, that was. Uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, Richard Paradise will be uh, 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 talked about by Jennifer Smith-Turner, who's a former nonprofit corporate and government executive and strong supporter of the Mouthless Vineyard uh, Film Society, and Renee Balter by Skip Finley, board member and a nationally known media uh, specialist who served on the committee that established the Cottage City Historic District. If Denny would come up. This is nice, my grandfather was a minister. Now I know how he felt. <laughs> Very happy to be here. Today I have the honor and privilege of awarding the Martha's Vineyard Museum's Martha's Vineyard Medal to a dear friend of many, many years, Dorothy Kenny Bangs. Sadly, it's being awarded posthumously as Dorothy left us a year ago last April, at the age of 88. A marvelous lady. I'm sure many of you know her. There's probably students in the room. Happily, I had it written here, and I'll explain it later. Two of her sons are here. Two of her three sons are here. Only one of them is here. I'll explain that in a little while. Dorothy's a vineyard resident for 67 years. She came here 
when she was recruited as a vocal music teacher, came to the island public schools in 1946. In 1948, she married, met and married Stuart Bangs of Vineyard Haven, another wonderful person. Probably a lot of you will remember Stuart. What a wonderful couple they made. You will meet one of their boys shortly, Dana Bangs. She retired in 1990 after teaching three generations of Islanders and is likely to be the single most important influence on the harmonies heard across the island. For many summers, Dorothy was also the postmaster at the small post office in West Chop. From the day that she heard the museum was thinking about buying the neighboring Marine Hospital, she was a very, very enthusiastic supporter. At a public hearing that we had for neighbors to discuss the Marine Hospital, Dorothy asked me if she could speak. And that was the first time I ever heard Dorothy ask if she could speak. <laughs> she was always very happy to give her opinion. And I said, sure, go ahead. I'm not going to stop Dorothy. And she said, just do it, do it, do it. And after that, the rest of the attendees totally agreed. No one was going to take on Dorothy on that one. In 2005, Dorothy was recognized by Hospice of Martha's Vineyard with the annual Spirit of the Vineyard Award. She was a longtime volunteer at Windermere, the Tisbury Senior Center, the Martha's Vineyard Hospital, in addition to active participation in the First Baptist Church of, in Vineyard Haven. Dorothy was also the leader of the annual Daffodil Days fundraiser, supporting the American Cancer Society for over 30 years. She'd always recruit me, too, to help deliver the daffodils around the island. She'd had a whole gang. It was a fun time. She was devoted to the cause, and she was a cancer survivor herself. She was devoted to that cause and bringing spring to all the vineyards with those beautiful daffodils. I first met Dorothy Kenny when I was in the third grade at the Tisbury School, and we have been friends ever since. Together with her husband, Stuart, they were pillars of our island community. Dorothy Kenny Bangs was a remarkable lady who will be remembered and loved by all of us who had the privilege to be one of her students or friends or both. The effect she had on so many of us growing up on our island may have been her largest gift. Thank you, Dorothy. Now, I would like to introduce Dana Bangs. I'm going to come up. Dorothy and Stuart have three boys. Dana, his twin brother, Jay, just pretend he's Jay, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> They're identical. One might have a beard one time and the other not, but otherwise. And Jay works at Stanford Hospital in Palo Alto, California. Yeah. Huh? I, work, I work at Stanford. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What am I saying? I thought you were Jay. Yeah, well, I'm used to being <laughs> Dana to be works there. <laughs> Jay is a doctor and works at, at uh, yeah, SUNY, now with Buffalo. SUNY Buffalo. Uh, yes. He's director of the uh, Department of Immunology and Microbiology at uh, SUNY Buffalo uh, um, University. Yeah. Yes. And their oldest brother, Paul, has a little connection. A lot of you saw the, the Morgan and were involved in going to see the Charles W. Morgan when it was here. Well, Paul was really a big player in that whole thing. Very silent, very quiet, very important. One of Packer's tugs went with the Morgan everywhere it went. Took it out from the dock, towed it at times when the winds were light, brought it into the dock, towed it up through the Cape Cod Canal, docked it next to the Constitution, the Constitution in Boston. And Paul is the captain of that tug, so he spent all that time with the Charles W. Morgan. And it was quite a responsibility. Now, he was supposed to be with us today. He can't be with us today. He was out on the tug, taking a load of what stone over to Chappaquiddick. He got it over there. The tide went out. He's stuck on the sandbar. 
<laughs> the, it's high tide at one o'clock in the morning, so maybe we'll get them to come in late. <laughs> so, anyway, Jay, Dana, Dana I'm going to do that. I'm Denny. <laughs> Say a few words. Thank sure. you. Thanks, Denny. Um, Oh, we're gonna oh, yeah, oh, the metal, of course. Do I have to do everything for you, Dan? <laughs> you always have. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. much. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Danny. All right. Hey. Yeah. 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 Since this is a historical society, I'll tell a brief little historical story from my childhood. I'm, I'm uh, reminded standing up here of a, a time when I was a, a squeaker in uh, shine shoes and a, and a clip-on bow tie uh, and uh, gone to church in Vineyard Haven on a Sunday morning and it was not as nice as today and it was uh, just about the time the Reverend was going to give his sermon and it, it, it let go cats and dogs and thunder and lightning and like all get out and uh, Henry Ritter who some of you may know of was uh, an old man at the time and a member of the church and sitting in the back and and uh, allowed at that point in time is how this was a good time for a hellfire and damnation sermon. And a as a little kid, I was gassed. I, nobody talked in church, not least of all me. And, and, uh, but Henry was a, a, his own force of nature. And uh, so I spent the intervening years wondering what a hellfire and damnation sermon might actually be like and, and also what it might like to be in a place where such a sermon could be delivered. And so at least uh, I know the latter, the answer to the latter question, this would be the ideal place for it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I thank the, uh, the museum for giving me the opportunity to be here and accept this award. And, and on behalf of my brothers, uh, uh, I thank you very, very much for this. Danny's given you a pretty good outline of my mother's history. And uh, she came here as a young woman after the war and, and taught music to generations of island uh, children, myself included, Denny included, and, and uh, at least three generations, and had a pretty profound impact on, on many of them, who, some who became music teachers and, and musicians in their own right. And, uh, and so, you know, when Denny uh, told me that we would, she would be getting this award, I was at first a little puzzled, not really making the connection with a historical um, you know, society with the museum, my dad maybe being more of the historian, but uh, um, when I understood that it was a larger sort of issue about community and, and, and uh, art and, and contribution, uh, that made much more sense to me. Uh, as somebody who's uh, spent the better part of his adult life uh, away from the island, off island, um, I have a pretty good sense about uh, what it's like to be in a place that has the kind of community that, that we have here on Martha's Vineyard for having lived in many places that don't have that. And uh, it, it is the people uh, that live in a community like this that make those contributions, that, that, that do the things that, that my mother did and the other awardees uh, have done in, in their time on the island that make it uh, a special place, and, and so um, uh, I do believe my mother contributed in that, and I'm very, very pleased to be here to uh, accept this honor on her behalf and on behalf of my brothers who all uh, send their thanks and gratitude. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>